This is a, a story about a man who loved a woman and wanted to give her everything she ever wanted. Because what I'm hearing is that your wife loved this jungle, tropical feel. You're working in crafts and in jewelry. And then now she has influenced you because yeah. when you love yeah. someone, they can, they can easily influence you. Yeah, she has influ- she can, <laughs> she's influenced you to bring more plants into the house, into the exterior space of your house. Yeah. And then now she's saying, hey, if we don't have enough room here, how about you do more of this elsewhere? Yeah, because everybody loves what, ha- what we see when they pass by the, the neighbors. They say, <laughs> oh, my God, it's so beautiful. And I, I, and I, uh, I, sh- I should have a husband like that. And everybody <laughs> told me, <my, laughs> and oh, my God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Inside Hilton's Head. And today I am on another field trip down in Florida in Southwest Ranches to visit, I would say, my new friend. Like, like someone who I am, like, uh, inspired by. Um, someone who I look up to. His daughters call him Poppy. Um, maybe I'm young enough to call you Poppy, too, because I, I think I, I'm looking at you there. You're like the, uh, some people call me uh, uh, the plant dad or plant, plant things. You are the plant poppy for sure. That is true. This individual who you can see uh, with me today, or if you're just here listening, the wonderful Edgar Amasquita, uh, someone who I found through the process of uh, being in the plant space. I visited a uh, convention uh, down in Florida in Tampa two years ago, I believe, called TPIE where I first met Edgar and his wonderful family. Uh, They are the owners of Perfect Choice Nurseries in Southwest Ranches. And um, when I was there in TPIE, Edgar, I was blown away by the selection of aeroids that you had there. And I told myself, if I had the opportunity to sit with this gentleman, I would take that opportunity and I would make the best of it. And here I am today with the opportunity to sit next to you, across from you, and to pick your brain because I know so many out there watching, listening, want to know a lot about you, but how you do what you do and all the plants that you surround yourself with. So today, Edgar, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having us in your home. And thanks for, and thank you so much for uh, just having us as a part of your world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to... I just be very fortunate right now because my wife and my daughters take care of me to be here with uh, Hilton Carter, the first interview I ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and, and I feel very comfortable. Uh, That's I think good. we speak the same language. This is about plants. This is about yeah. Of a plant community, and that's that's where we make it really comfortable. For sure, Edgar. I'm glad you feel comfortable. Um, English isn't your first language; it's Spanish. So, if there's ever a moment where you don't understand how, uh, my English, mm-hmm. um, and you want to take a break and and figure out how we can communicate better that way, great. But as you said, mm-hmm. we speak the same language, yeah. the same love language when it comes to plants, okay. and your bird mm-hmm. is speaking. Uh, their own language as well. And they'll be chiming in through this episode. So if you hear, if you hear that, uh, that's because Edgar and his family, they live in somewhat of an indoor jungle. I would call it that, Edgar. There are a lot of plants on this property that you live in. How many plants would you say you have here on the property that are what many of us will call indoor plants? Yeah, indoor plants, probably we have like a, Hundred, a hundred indoor yeah, plants. Yeah, a hundred is uh, is like twenty in the inside the house, and about seventy outside in the indoor patio. Yeah, this is at the right hand side. Uh, the indoor patio is covered by shed, mm-hmm. and um, this outdoor. Yeah, and it's, it, it look it grow much better. They have their own uh, humidity, and they looks great. For sure. I mean, look, you're just. 
telling someone who lives uh, in the Northeast about your humidity and all the light you get yeah. down here in Florida. You, most of us are jealous of I that know. sort of climate and that yeah. sort of light and the fact that your tropical plants can thrive in that situation. Uh, we love that. Um, I think the, the thing is, the one thing that uh, I want to know, for, for one, off top, um, is this love for plants. People who uh, know Aeroid, I guess Aeroid Greenhouses is also a part of mm -hmm. your business. It's a part of Perfect Choice. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a two companies separate two companies. One is sell wholesale to all US. Which uh, one is wholesale? Center, Which uh, one? Aeroid Greenhouses. So yeah. Aeroid Greenhouses they sell wholesale all across the US. Yes. Copy. And uh, online stores and garden center. And Perfect Choice they we sell to the local people mm -hmm. and people who travel. Yeah. From us, uh, we take care of the. Uh, uh, also, because we have a lot of uh, customers, they they have destination perfect choice. Gotcha. It's a grateful. It's a grateful for us, and we try our best to have the best selection. And Aeroid and um, other types of, of plant, they really cares about them. I love that. I love that. Your passion, enthusiasm about plants is very clear uh, for anyone who knows you, and you'll start to hear that. Uh, over the next hour on this podcast, um, if you're just making yourself aware of who Edgar is, um, I saw that genuine love for plants the last time I was here and got to visit you and seeing all of the greenhouses um, that you guys house, all of your new growing plants and the things that you source as far as being able to ship those out. My question uh, to start really is, where did this passion begin? Um, where did you grow up? Well, I, I am from, originally from Guatemala. Um, I came, what city? What, uh, Guatemala City. Guatemala City, okay. Guatemala City, yes. Uh, I came here uh, 17 years old, almost 40 years. And, and I met my wife here. Uh -huh. my, uh, I met my wife in Guatemala and we came, we came over here and reunion again. So before and, you go deeper into that. Yeah. Let's take it back to Guatemala City. Yeah. You were born there. Yeah. 17 years you were born, then you moved to the U.S. Before you came here, that setting, very tropical plants. Well, uh, Guatemala, practically this is, uh, they call the uh, uh, infinity spring mm -hmm. because they, the weather is always really good in Guatemala City. Uh, but it's not a tropical. Not tropical. Not so, tropical. So you didn't grow up around no, plants in the I, house? I didn't, I didn't grow um, with the tropical plants. Um, a few plants in the gardens, but not much. Uh, Florida is. When I'm, we moved to Florida in 1989, mm -hmm. this is what I see is the green. And this make me relax. When I saw the green, it made me relax. Uh, we already live a year here and I still on vacation and working and we still feel in vacation because that's, <laughs> uh, that's the feeling that I have, you know, of and, course. I, and I work and my wife feel the same, but my wife feels like a more jungle. It's like, uh, all this all together mm -hmm. with the jungle like that. She, she, she loved it. She loved being surrounded yeah. by a lot of greenery. So, so I so inspired she, by her. So does she also grow up in Guatemala city? Yeah. So also not surrounded by yeah. plants. Yeah. So both of you, when you moved to the U.S., you you didn't have a uh, connection or a want to jump right into having plants in your home. It was when you moved to Florida and you saw all of the greenery and the lushness of this tropical space that you were like, I I feel a bit more relaxed, more comfortable uh, in that that sort of setting. Exactly. The, when we when we moved to Florida, uh, we get a new apartment. And we moved into a new apartment and we had it, uh, we bought it a new sofa, very nice, uh, with flowers and everything. And then on the corners, we put a pair of uh, uh, arecas, arecas mm -hmm. yep. on the sides. And it looks amazing. So <laughs> probably that one is the start when you see, oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. But we not even thought this is going to be our business. So what was what was your business at that period? Before we had a, 
we are sellers, you know, we're sellers. So we being starting with uh, Guatemala handcrafts, imported Guatemala handcrafts, and uh, selling in the shopping malls. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after finish the trends, the shop the of the Guatemalan craft, we start silver jewelry. The silver so you jewelry, and your wife are working together. Yeah, we were working together. Me and my wife, we were thinking together. We go to the flea market together. We go. Uh, with them together and uh, in the cage. In the uh, hold up. So for those of us who don't know who them are, are you are you are, are you talking about your children? You would yeah. take your children with I you. I take the children all the time to the to the flea market to sell in the flea market for the money. <laughs> so your daughters, you have two daughters. Uh, they were both working with you yeah. and your wife to sell products yeah. at yeah. the flea market. Yeah. I think, I think that's a good way to utilize your children, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they see young kids out there and yeah. they're like, you know what? Maybe we will buy that. Yeah. I like that. And you're and we'll talk about this later, but your your children, your two girls, they're still working with you today. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh uh I think their Paula is the one they really start these trends, the, which is the Aeroid plants. Well, before we get before into that, that, let's talk okay. more about you and how this transition okay. happened because for me there was a oh i know big I, switch yeah, okay. right yeah, so i want to know more about your switch okay. so when we when we start working and uh, when we finished working in the silver jewelry mm -hmm. that 2000 and 1999 um uh before that uh we bought a house and Fill, fill it up the house for on, with trees and everything. And my okay. wife asked me for more trees and trees and trees. When it's a jungle, there's no more trees to put it in there. And I say, hey, I cannot buy no more trees because we don't have no more rooms. That's it. We don't have no more rooms. <laughs> and now I have to maintain this. It's, it's a lot of work. And I practically I work in the yard like every day. I don't go to work anymore. <laughs> I started working and date. And when she go to work and I, when they come back, it's, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And I always have a something, try to have a something different for her. And uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and it work. And then when they say, hey, I am, I don't think so. We don't have, we can continue doing more plants and we have to do something else. And he, she asked me, hey, go, why you don't go to do somebody else's yards? Oh, so and you were I working. Say, Are you crazy? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So you were working in jewelry. Yeah. You're yeah, so, okay. Okay. So I'm going to, here's the thing. We're going to peel back this whole thing. We're going to peel it back. So I mean, we're going to peel back the layers because what I'm starting to understand, this is a, a story about a man who loved a woman and wanted to give her everything she ever wanted. Because what I'm hearing is that your wife loved this jungle tropical feel. You're working in crafts and in jewelry. And then now she has influenced you because yeah. when you love someone, they can they can easily influence you. Yeah, she has influ easy. she can <laughs> she's influenced you to bring more plants into the house, into the exterior space of your house. Yeah. And then now she's saying, Hey, if we don't have enough room here, how about you do more of this elsewhere? Yeah, because everybody loves what we have what we see. When they pass by the the neighbors, they say, "Oh my God, it's so beautiful!" And I, I and I, um, I, sh I should have a husband like that. And everybody <laughs> told me, <laughs> "And oh my God, I'm in trouble." <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And everybody goes jealous, working in the yard and everything. And it's, yeah, it's, and it's, and it's, and then she doesn't care. I mean, she want more plants. Of course. Yeah. And and but the the. I'm an active person, you know. Uh, if he, they, if he, she told me something, I, I, I don't like it in the beginning, but uh, five minutes later, I thought and I say I'm gonna do it. So okay, so let so me. She had her writing ideas, something yeah. like that, and something when I when I start thinking, yeah, she's right. You know what I mean? But I get changing it. from sell the jewelry to the garden, cutting grass is big difference. That's a big change because yeah, there's a lot that goes change. into that. So. Your okay, so let's go back just a step because what she saw that you could do, your talent in the idea of bringing plants in or um, making a more manicured or designed outdoor space yeah. with greenery, um, she saw your talent there. Yeah, your neighbor saw your talent there. Yeah. You mentioned, you just said 
they were like, I wish I had a husband like that, uh, which I love. I mean, that's, that's just great. But they're just talking about how talented you are in that space. Did you see yourself as someone who was talented there? Yeah, I just love it because... Because, But why? Yeah, because, why don't you love yeah, it? Yeah, I see that I I have a talent. Um, I think I'm a salesperson. Mm. You know, I'm a salesperson. At the same time, I work with my heart like that because uh, I try to improve myself. Everything that I done, all the time, I challenge myself all the time, and um, and with her, yes, I to to, and I saw my wife happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And then when she happy, she's comfortable. She is, she can, she do everything. She do the, the dishes, she do the everything in the house. But if, if he saw me on the yard doing things, she's really happy. So, so I saw that uh, we can get it along together like that. If I walk outside uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the garden, she's really happy with me, you know? And I, I love think it. That, that what, because I don't like to do nothing here. I just cook once a week, maybe sometimes Sundays. So, and that's, uh, that's what I do. And inside the house, I don't do it practically. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have, I think that's the, um, the thing about marriage or partnership is that you both make sacrifices or you make decisions based on where uh, you both have a idea of who's better at something else. Yeah. So if you're better in outside and she's better indoors, you figure that out and, there's a, and then it makes the perfect balance. Yeah, but I, at the same time, I feel, uh, well, I recognize that I, right now, later on in the years, that I sell fish too, you know, because she does everything, a lot, a lot of work, you know. And uh, then this is, uh, 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 so I needed something, improve myself to do something better and better. And so uh, it come up with the, with the, with the, with the idea to get, Uh, a company to low motor, uh, low motor mm -hmm. houses, and uh, I go upside and look at uh, the paperwork, and they say, "Hey, low low maintenance for sale." The trailers and the trailers say, "Perfect choice, low maintenance." Hold on, let's go back. Okay. So your <laughs> so your wife suggested, "Look, how about you take what you've done here mm -hmm. and sprinkle that goodness." to others who might need it for their lawn care or their exterior space. Mm -hmm. And you thought for a second, you were like, maybe. And then you said, you know what? My wife is right. She tends to always exactly. be right. Yeah. Right. She has great ideas. And you're like, I'll, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So are you saying that you saw something paper wise that said perfect yeah. choice nurseries or perfect this, choice lawn maintenance? You saw this in a paper? Yeah. I saw the, the picture that say we sell lawn maintenance, uh, Uh, trailer. Okay, they, so I'm. Um, um, I think they I'm, have a much. They have machines and insides, and they say, "Okay, I'm going to buy the the trailer, and I bought a truck, and I immediately next week I had the trailer and the truck hold to on, start so, working." Hold on. So the name of the company was already there. Yeah, you bought the company. Yes, I bought. But I bought. I bought the name, the trailer, the, with tra the name. Oh. And I love the name. I think the name is incredible. Okay, this is, uh, I think that name is, it's perfect choice. It is the perfect choice. You're like, yeah. the name is the perfect choice and it is the perfect choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, okay, so I thought, yeah. okay, so I thought you were saying you had a vision and there was this banner or this paper that said perfect choice nurseries. And you're like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah. And then you went and you made these things happen. You, there was a business that existed, the trailer, had the name. You were like, how much do I need to pay for that? You paid for yeah, it. Paid. And now you have all the tools to do all the lawn care mm -hmm. that was necessary. Wonderful. So that starts. At, at that point, you didn't have a shop, right? No. What year is this? Uh, 1999. 1999. Yeah. Okay. I registered the company in September for my birthday, 1999. Got it. Yeah. So what, what what was the location here in Florida? You were in uh, small ranches well, or before small, that, Southwest ranches? Before the half, uh, purchase, I purchased uh, a land. Okay. Two acres and a half land uh, in the ranches. Got it. Uh, so I already have the land. I just going to put my, my, my trailer over there. But uh, uh, I bought the land. And uh, at the same time, someone offered me to to buy to rent a property we already existing nursery, a disaster nursery. And uh, and it's easier to start over there because they have a pump, this and that. So we start cleaning the property. So we sell 
uh, start selling plants and lawnmowers, the, the properties. Uh, but uh, I decided to, to just do landscaping, no lawnmowers anymore. So are you the one doing a lot of the actual hands-on work, or are you just the, the, the no, boss yes, of the I company? No, yes, I do. The, I, I hurt myself so much because oh. I don't have the experience in that, but I buy my own lawn mowers mm -hmm. to do standing and do it like that. And yeah. everything. I have Pedro with me. He's still working with me to do the trimming and all this stuff. Yeah. And Pedro is uh, 25 years with me already. So, oh, wow. So he's, he's the guy, my right-hand side, so... Um, hard worker, uh, Pedro Rivera. And uh, yeah, we st I start with him practically uh, from, from scratch. So yeah. you're mowing, you're doing lawn care around Southwest Ranches. Uh, yeah. You have now the land uh -huh. that you're just using for. Yeah, yeah we had the land we use it to grow plants. To grow plants. Started. So you're gonna yeah. house all your plants for your landscaping business, where you're gonna apply plants. You're gonna give. You're gonna sell those plants to customers. Yeah. Right. But now you also have the in nursery. Design. Yeah. We and then and then after that we bought Perfect Choice right in the corner in 2001. In 2001. So now you yeah. have your plant shop. Yeah, the plant shop. Now the plant shop starts. Now in 2001, I mean, I was young enough to not really care about plants. Mm -hmm. Um. I remember when I did get excited about plants, it felt like, and this was in 2013, 14, it felt like it wasn't that big of a thing yet, but people were digging into plants. So in 2001, what was it like having a plant shop? Were there a lot of people excited to come in and buy plants or was it just like a normal space where you, you saw a, a bit of a flow of people here and there, but it wasn't the rush that it is today? And that's the, the vision that I have mm -hmm. and I, the blessing that I have because that corner over there is a prime corner. It was available just for me because I, I, I didn't look at it for a long time and what well, can affordable, it cannot, it, it can afford it because it's too expensive. But, uh, um, the September 11 happened. Mm -hmm. I think the sellers freak out. And he called me and said, hey, uh, make me offer to yeah. the property. And I make a low, really, really low offer and accept it. Uh, 2002, 2003, uh, Weston, the city of Weston, mm -hmm. started building all these houses around there. Okay. So all the people who are in Weston, they go to Perfect Choice. Uh, so that one, they make Perfect Choice really uh, standing uh, popular uh, popular yeah and uh and and i at this time is the nursery i am number one after 20 20 23 years i am the number one uh recommend rec, rec, number one recommendation nursing recommendation for purchase and do landscaping that's today that today and weston yeah so you've been open for 23 20, years 23 years uh a corner of perfect choice Wonderful. So in 2001, the, the business opens. Is it a booming business for 23 years? Was there ever a lull or situation well, where you... Yeah, it's happened in, the, in the 2008 and the, in the crash. Crash, yeah. yeah. Everyone suffered yeah, and then. then the, we know how to financing. After that crash, we learn financing and then yeah. we start little step by step. I see the like a stock market like that growing mm -hmm. with the stock market like like that. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and uh, this is a big uh, opportunity for for me because uh, I go down and and up up up. So yeah. I recognize it that uh, there are really is, uh, struggles in uh, in uh, 2008. And, yeah. Uh, but there's and, and there's struggles in business owning a business a brick and mortar and you have your your landscaping company as well. So you're trying yeah. to maintain all of this yeah. at once. Yeah. Um, I mentioned 2014 was when I got really excited and started to bring plants into my space. And um, I started the process of becoming, I guess, I guess who I am right now is like a plant stylist, chair designer, all those things in 2016. And in that uh, moment, there was a lot of, uh, I would say social media started to really yeah. pick up. So it's really pick up. And I found myself on social with a community of plant lovers. 
who you would know as well now. Um, but it kind of guided me and helped me in the process of being able to share my love for plants. Mm -hmm. Now, as the years went by, I started to see more and more people get excited about plants. Um, and then there was this thing where everyone started to focus on aeroids. Yeah. That one had happened in 2019. The, the year, the whole year of 2019, that's where everything started. Paula started probably in May to see the difference. Um, uh, when it really at, at, attracted to me, because she always Paula told me, hey, Papa, you should have this plant. We should have this plant. And I never... What plant was it? Do you know? I don't remember, but the, the real attraction is like a somebody from Miami uh, come to purchase plant for, from ah. us. And uh, uh, and, uh, and I asked Paula, Paula, what are they doing over here? Because they're from Miami. Uh, no, they buy, they come over here to buy the plants that you, that I posted. Really? Oh, wow, this is great. So they have a bunch of plants in Miami, but not like this one, Papa. But what is this one? What is this plant what you're talking the, about? What was the plant? Probably like a, like a very, like pedal fig, you know? Yeah. Pilea, Pilea, something, a very- So a variegated Pilea. Yeah, very common plant. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like so that. So something ver variegation. over there because he, she posted and then that's when this, everything is stopped. And we'll be right back after a break from our sponsor. Balancing work and life can be really stressful and finding ways to work through the stress is always a goal of mine. Of course, the process of nurturing plants helps me to slow down, take a breath and bring in joy. But unfortunately, my plants aren't licensed therapists with expert advice. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or you're just a human who lives in this world who is going through a hard time, Therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding the therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with the therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com forward slash Hilton. Clicking this link helps to support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Starting this podcast was supposed to be a little extra therapy for me, getting the ideas in my head out. Good to know I can always use better help just in case Molly can't help me. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with better help. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Hilton. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. Now, back to the show. So around 2017, 2018, I started to see a bigger, I would say, boom when it comes to plants. So I was having a lot of people ask, do you think this is a trend of all the millennials and young people getting excited about plants? And what I realized is that many of them were getting excited about these rare plants, these aeroids. So when that transition started to take place, was it still just you and your wife m managing the shop? No. Actually, my, my daughter started working two years before the trends. So sometime around like yeah. 2015, 2016? Yeah, 2015, 2016. Okay. And um, yeah, she she started working. The, and and uh, she asked me questions for, hey, bring this plant and the other things, I don't know where I can find it. So Paula, the Paula younger daughter. Has the, has the vision to find it because she saw the media and the, the little plants. And and uh, she asked me to, if he, if he I can, if I can build a plant truck. 
So what do you mean by building a plant truck? Okay, uh, she went ahead and had a plant truck to go all the shopping center and and all and all the events and take the plant the truck to sell our plants. Oh, so she was saying, let's get a truck yeah. so that we can take plants to events and yeah. sell plants. And this was in 2016. Yeah. So what was Paula's... No, that one is at 2019. Okay, so in 2019, she had noticed on social that yeah. there were these particular yeah. plants that customers, like a social media plants, influencers, maybe just individuals in general were excited about, were yeah. talking about. Did she have a background in social? Was she working as like a, a social yeah, she, media? She, she, know, she know exactly what, I, what she want, but I, I am the only one that listen to her. You so know, you, so, I, so, I, I built the truck for her and I say, okay, you have your truck. Now we just go sell it. And when I go sell, we go sell it, I want to put my plant, Bougainvillas and this and that. Papi, those not the plants. <laughs> those is not the plant. You got to put the house plants. So where I can get the house plant? It's, and it's really hard to get the house plant in those times. It was really hard to get yeah. house plants Everybody, in 2019. Yes. Yeah, 2019. Because Mom's it hard. Nobody, nobody doing a house plant, only the a regular house plant. And nobody wants the house plant. So we so hold want on, hold something on. different. Hold on, hold on, slow down. Slow down. No one wanted those house plants. Everyone, everyone that I know of wanted house plants in general. But you're saying people, pe people it's, wanted them, but you special. were like, no, I want the special plants. A special plants. But Paula and maybe Melody were like, Dad, we're gonna need to take this to the next level. We need to find these exactly. special plants. Yeah. So in 2019, you were trying to find these special plants. How did you go about? I mean, because everyone knows you as basically the aeroid king, the rare plant. I've never seen so many rare variegated plants in one space in my entire life. I told people when I came down to your greenhouses, I was like, this is where you come or you go to take a visit to make a rare plant a normal house plant because the plants that you see here in other places, people might have one or two in their shops if they're lucky, but you have thousands. So what was, what was your, uh, uh, where did you understand? Like, Hey, I have to go here to find these special plants. Okay. We traveled to Tampa together to get a uh, one mm -hmm. apple. And she already signed up the uh, waiting list for three months. So a waiting list for three months for a Monstera yeah. album. For a Monstera album. Yeah. Okay. And we paid $300, I think. Uh, 250 something like that. And I say, wow, we have to do this. So I, find, I start talking with my wife and say, hey, where we can get these plants? Yeah. So we got to find out who. who. And uh, my wife um, uh, always has the magic idea. Yes, and bling. <laughs> and she come out with someone that I, that I, that I have those plants. And I start to talk to him and everything. So we make a relationship and bring the first plant to our perfect choice of Monstera Albo. I'm a Monstera Thai Constellation. Monstera Thai Constellation yeah. was the first yeah. rare plant, I guess, at that time yeah. that you brought to the uh, yeah, nursery. That's uh, 2019. Okay. And then uh, by that point, there's a Roy show. Uh, it's going on in September, and it's full. I mean, I never see so many people. Want, they fighting for the plants at uh, Aeroid Show. So you had an Aeroid Show where? Where was this? That one, Aeroid Show, is, is uh, in Fairchild, Coral Gables. Uh, it happened every every September and every year. Um but that particular year, it started everything. If they, all U.S. travel, uh, uh, Hunso was here. All, all the importers, everything, they, they participated in the events. And, and I go over there, just purchase and plants and yeah. sell it wholesale, so, at retail, a perfect choice. I think everything started that year. And then um, the, what I see is opportunity. Mm. The opportunity is is huge it's big when you see so many people um want the plant that you can have because they were you, losing their minds yeah, about this yeah, this yes. thai constellation thai and you knew for a yeah. fact you could create more of these oh yeah yeah uh, i can i can do whatever that i want um 
because we have the greenhouses already purchased and we grow bougainvilleas inside the greenhouses. So uh -huh. we don't use the appropriate uh, plants to grow in the greenhouses. So, but, but do everything happen? Uh, uh, it's really, uh, when you purchase uh, a Thai constellation at that time, is if you buy a hundred, you spend a lot of money too, because yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't, it's, it's, it wasn't expensive, but it wasn't cheaper too. But uh, I spent a lot of money and I lost a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know what kind of soil I put in there. I don't know what type of humidity, white, everything. I don't know nothing about it. So you're learning on I the learning. go here. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So you're saying you lost money because some of these plants were suffering, they died yeah. or? Yeah. It's, uh, uh, the winter is come, mm -hmm. September. Uh, we take the, the plant truck to TPIE. Yeah, got it. And uh, we are more the most popular boot in TPIE in 2020. 2020. You are now yes. the most popular. The most popular. Booth. I people make rooms over, make meetings over there in front of our <laughs> booths, talking about our plants. How because, did they, How did they make you feel? Uh, I talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about those two plants, and I don't know what I, I tell. Sometimes because, but I have the, I feel the energy, the love. I feel so much passion in every single one over there that I really help me to keep going in this, in this type. Of course. So you felt yeah. like you yeah. were on the right path. Yeah, I am. Uh, I think we are the most important boot in the year. And um, it's the first time we want to show up there. You yeah. won. Yeah. No, no, we get the second place, but that's the first time that we uh, attended to. Oh, to so the TPI. first time you attended yeah. this particular event, not only did you win second place, but you yeah. were the most popular booth yeah. and at I, the event. And I, tell, and, I tell, and I tell my dad, look, this is the big opportunity. We have to go to TPIE and sell this plant wholesale. I say, what? what you? I mean, this is, looks ridiculous because we don't have no plants in the yeah. stocks. When we had the find the way is when the summer arrives in May, because the plant is start changing. The growth of the, the plant happens yeah. better much here. Better, in May. yeah, yeah. Got and it. that's when I start selling. Very nice. So you had said that when you first bought the ties, that you lost a lot of money because you didn't understand the soil. Yeah. Um, that process to get from where you were then to where you started to head or where you are now, what did you learn about the soil medium itself that you needed for these plants to actually thrive? Yeah. I started to work with the cocoa chips. Cocoa chips. Can you explain more about cocoa chips? What, what is that exactly? The cocoa chips is the Thai uh, media, the mm -hmm. Thai mix. They use it over there to, to don't lose the variegation. Uh, in, in Thailand, everything is growing in cocoa chunk. It's called cocoa yeah. chunk. Yeah, very light cocoa chunk, uh, vertically, and um, and uh, other things. But their cocoa is the most important there for there mm -hmm. to don't lose the variegation. So this is so this is a soilless medium. Yeah, it's dry. It's dry, but it's good. Um, uh, because um, you have to water it constantly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's good for the plant to keep everything here. Swiss variegator, they have have to have cocoa. And if it doesn't have that sort of medium, it will then lose its variegation. The thing yeah, that people maybe like fifty percent of them, or sixty or seventy percent of them, they lost the variegation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's the thing that people are so excited about. What is it about the variegated plants that get people yeah. so excited? What do you think? Uh, I think because it's a brand new plant. It's a brand new plant they can afford it. Uh, also, oh, it's exciting to get a, a beautiful plant. Now, because when you the, say the, the Instagram, they make it the plants really beautiful, yes. and the people love to see those Instagram pictures. <laughs> well, I think it's inspired. Yeah, I did inspire me. I, I, my, you see my videos and in, uh, in my yeah. Instagram, uh, inspire me every time that I go. I'm not go over there to sell the plant. I'm going over there to show how beautiful they are. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now you're saying these are new plants. Um, many of us are just starting to see. And when I come here, I'm like, well, I've never seen that plant in this variegated form before. Um, has how has this variegation process taken shape? I think Thailand is one of the Thailand. Yeah, they come out with the, the new plant maybe every other month. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're they're amazing to to, to do the variegation. You know, but to keep the variegation, that's the problem. It's very it's very difficult. It's in very the, difficult. In the very just not just to keep the variegation, it's very difficult yeah. to keep that part yeah. of the plant healthy or exactly. looking its best. Yeah. So that's where I'm always in the uh, mindset of is it worth it for the individuals who have to pay a higher price for said variegated plant but also for someone who is trying to consistently uh, create a space that is filled with uh, beautiful growth and also filled with the energy of success. Because when you see a variegated plant, you start to see, I guess, the white parts of that foliage start to brown, which is typical. Yeah. That can make you feel like you're not yeah. doing, the, I guess, the I, job I think, to keep it I healthy. For me, um, I don't like disappointing the people. Yeah. I don't want people get disappointed by the plants because probably they are beginning and then they're losing money and say, oh, they don't want to buy it anymore. Yeah. You know, and the point is uh, continue to a better price. You know what I mean? Better, better price. Because I, I saw, I saw the love with the people buy one plant mm -hmm. and I feel, and I feel it. Yeah. And this is very important to me. So, so for me is, 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 transfer, have the beautiful plant, give it to them, beautiful, very good standing plant, don't variegate, don't lose the variegation and uh, uh, keep buying plants, you know, expensive. Sure. And I think that's the, all the variegated plants right now, it will it become a regular plant probably in the next two years. You know what I mean? And so you're thinking and by the happened, time... And it's happened right now, you know? So we're in 2024. So by 2026, you feel like a Thai constellation will have the same price point as a Golden yes. Pothos? Yeah. Yeah, really? probably, probably not, that, not that dramatic because, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's going to be affordable. It'll be... Well, we've yeah. been seeing more Thai constellations yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thai in constellations different spaces. Right now. Yes, it's now, be affordable. Now, if that's the case. And not only that, many, many, many other come. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Many more will yeah. come. And I guess for the individuals who paid such a high price point for a plant that they thought they were investing in, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, buy low, sell high, right? Is what they say. Um, so they, they should probably start selling off their ties uh, and all their other rare, the rare plants that were rare then. Uh, soon because there's going to be more plants coming soon, but all the plants that we know right now that are very rare, they should, um, they're going to drop in price is what yeah. you're saying. And they're Definitely. going to be more readily available in yeah. different plant shops. Yeah. Now, and that's the point. I think that's the point. But, but why when, is that the point? Yeah. Is it the point for you? Because you want, yeah, you I want, want to be able to share. Yeah. With, I want to share the love. I want to share the plant. I want to share the, uh, to the community why they deserve it. You know what I mean, and this is and this is a this is about make people happy yeah. because our our we are you know what I mean we are uh, we are blessing to have all these plants, but uh, for me it's a it's a really good commitment to be seriously uh, uh, sharing uh, this product at affordable price. Got it. You know. So let's help the community out, especially if, if these individuals are. P pr will be paying a higher price point for future rare plants, but also the ones that they have now. They're really excited about them. You sell so many of them, but it's, it's, it's and I always say this to people who um, see the plants that I have in my home and they're envious and they, they look up to me and they're like, oh, you're so good at caring for your plants. I'm like, well, that's because I understand how to care for them. But if I have a variegated plant, I had an elbow and I decided I was going to uh, sell that plant because it put so much pressure on me to care for it. I had, it had its own humidifier. It, it, I spent so much time just tending to it. Right. But I wanted to make sure that it stayed pristine. Mm -hmm. What would be some, I would say some takeaways that individuals who have these types of plants, what would be some things that they could uh, utilize 
to keep their variegation? Think, One, the cocoa chunks in the soil. Yeah. But what? Exactly. What are the other things? I think they things? needed rotated the plant. They needed. You say rotate? Rotate, rotate it, like move it around for sure. Put it in a cabinet, cover it with the plastic. Uh, oh no, slow down. So when you're saying uh, put it in the cabinet, you say cover it in plastic. Cabinet, you're saying to create humidity. Humidifier. Humidifier. Humidity. Humidifier. Uh, love is love, love, love is love, release, fertilize it. Low numbers, 13, 11, 11. No high numbers, 18, 19, 20. No. Low, low numbers because the low numbers, they have less uh, 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 magnesium, potassium, and everything that's going to go like flowers. They bloom. Ooh, so it. you need to fertilize that it bloom it's for blooming. No uh, for growing, for blooming. So if, to keep that variegation. Six, six, six. Six eight eight nine nine like this. Use a fertilizer that is is yeah. good for blooming, not for growing. No, for growing. Yeah, because if you put the growing uh, the, those fertilizer, the yes, just make the plant green. It, it, you will reverse it. That'll yeah. also reverse yeah, the reverse, actual yeah. variegation. Oh yeah. wow! It'll okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, cocoa chunk but, in the yeah, soil. But, uh, yeah, cocoa chunk, but uh, you need a rotator windows and this. And this and that, and the cabinet they really work together for for the cabinet. So just I like a little terrarium of sorts, yeah, to terrarium. help hold and the also, humidity. And also, and also in case the cocoa, if you have to know what the much the 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 one that uh, those cap they sell them with uh, perlite, uh, yeah, uh, little rocks mm -hmm. and uh, other rocks thing, uh, rock uh, media they had mm -hmm. all together. Um. You can use that one. They keep the variation also. This is something that you can yeah, buy in stores. Yeah, the something... rocks, the rock media, like uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, the little brown things. Leica. 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 Okay. Yeah, Leica. So Leica, yeah. Leica um, perlite. Yeah. Uh, cocoa. Co uh, no cocoa. Uh, this. I can I can put it in the I I I say I give you the the number. Got it. We'll put this in the um, description. Yeah. For any of you who are looking to uh, build this um, mixture for yourselves for your plants, um, I think that's really the thing. It's it's we all want these plants. We see them. We love them. Mm -hmm. um, the price point can scare people um, from having them, and that price point has been I will say the cause of a lot of plant shops, nurseries, conservatories, botanical gardens, having, you know, your bad characters breaking into these spaces or just stealing these plants because of that price point and because they know that they can probably sell it on the, which is a ridiculous thing to say here, but the black market of the plant world. Um, I love the fact that you're trying to even it up, make it so that they're not so... Um, expensive that the next person who just wants to pay a, a, a small fee for something that they love as well can easily get it. And I think that's great. And it'll also keep these bad characters from uh, thinking that they can just grab any sort of plant that is rare and uh, make a few bucks off of it. Because I'm sure there's plenty of people who are just coming into your shop thinking they're going to come in, they're going to buy one of your bigger plants, they're going to chop it chop, up, exactly. and they're going to sell it. Yeah, I sell in the plant like that to chop. I don't really sell the little plants. Mm -hmm. one. No, we sell in a full plant uh, to make people uh, cut it, and probably it's going to be the half. We're sharing with somebody else. So I keep the mother, and then they sell that one to you. And that will make make the price lower. Uh, I had a greenhouse they call Mama House. The Mama House is a huge, beautiful greenhouse. So I keep all the mothers in there. So right now is the time to propagate the summertime. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. That, that I'm very exciting to that. And the price uh, uh, dropped completely in the summer for every single um Plant side things, yeah. Uh, because the it's easy to propagate it when you can propagate it, plants drop and they're steady. Well, Edgar, you're talking about easy propagation, but you also have a a greenhouse. So when you say it's easy to propagate, 
I want people to understand that it's easy to easy to propagate for you because you have a greenhouse, you have the perfect yeah. atmosphere environment for these cuttings to grow. I love, and I hope people didn't miss this, but I love that you have an entire greenhouse dedicated to the mother plants. Yeah. And these aren't plants that you'll ever, ever sell. You're taking top cuttings yeah, top of cuttings, those plants to cuttings. then propagate yeah. and then you then sell those. Exactly. I love that. Yeah, this is yeah. This is the only way that I can keep it the lower prices and, be, and be affordable for everybody, you know? Of course. Uh, because I think I have a garden center and I really think about the people who's going to sell those plants. You know what, what are you I mean? Thinking how, about? Much, what? how much they're going to sell it? Because I saw... I, I, I sold all the domain to how maintaining the garden center to gotta make money in order to 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 maintain it and For buy sure. those plants. For know? sure. Are you are you ever a bit wary of the individuals that you like do you I know you're thinking about the garden centers, but what about the individuals who are on uh, I guess just selling them on Etsy or eBay? So many right now. Yeah. And they, and this is great. This is beautiful. Uh, but uh, we don't want to disappoint them, you know. Yeah. We don't really want to disappoint them. Um, I mean, you can, you can. I sell finished product. I sell plant uh, with roots. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And this is really important for 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 them who's buying their first plant, red yeah. plants. Yeah. You know, at least they can last probably eight months. Exactly. But but uh, if you take care of them, you know, if you take <laughs> yeah. care of them, but if you want to buy one plant. Nice, he survived. They want more and more and more and of more. Of course. If you don't, they don't survive, I don't think so. They're going to continue buying plants. But uh, if you buy a plant without roots and it's a beginner and they don't know what's going on. They're going to kill the plant. They're going to kill the plant. It, probably they pay like uh, $25 for the plant. Uh, just a note, huh? Just a note. And they have to wait so long. And the, and the plant costs probably a little bit bigger with roots and everything. Uh, fifty dollars. So, so for twenty five dollars, I prefer a, f a finished product. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I love that you stand behind your products mm -hmm. because not only is it just like you want to have that initial sale, the return customer comes from the fact that not because they purchase a plant and then they kill it and then they're like, oh, I gotta go buy another one. I always saw it as I purchased a plant from you. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I've cared for it. It's thriving. I now feel so great and, and, and feel like I can do more of this that I'm going to come back and buy more. Mm -hmm. Especially when I'm coming back and buying more of yours because I know that I'm going to have some good success here mm -hmm. because the individuals who have given this plant to me, they have put the effort into making sure my root system is, a, is good to start with, mm -hmm. that my soil medium is great to start mm -hmm. with. And then I can learn from that process. And I think that's always a good business plan uh, in general. So I think um, uh, if, if any, any individuals are finding themselves in South Florida um, and you end up at perfect choice, you have made the perfect choice. Yeah, I, I have uh, five different types of soil for sale in the next two months. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the bags... Uh, Really graphic. Okay, what is beautiful. the five soils? I'm a guess. Let me guess, and you tell me I'm wrong. Uh, aeroids. Mm -hmm. One for just aeroids. Yeah. Orchids. No, anthuriums. Anthuriums. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cacti. Alocasia. I like it. Oh wow, you're wow. Okay, I'm I'm not guessing any of these. All right, you tell us. Aeroids and uh, alocasias, anthuriums. What else? Uh, all-purpose home uh, house plants. I could have guessed that one. I knew I was, that was coming next. All-purpose. All-purpose house plants. All right. And what's the fifth? And propagation. Ooh. Yeah. And propagation. I'm very excited about the propagation. I'm going to have a two types of propagation. Okay. One with a little soil with a tree firm, which is really, really good for propagate with okay. other uh, cocoa, uh, fiber, strator. And other things, and a slow release fertilize. Everyone they're gonna have their own release uh, release fertilize. Yeah. Because they need something to pop up. For sure. You know. Uh, but uh, as the other one propagated is gonna be rocks. Mm. Yeah, they mix with uh, all type of rocks. So which is 
that mean there's that plant is not gonna rot at all, but you gotta keep humidity. It's yeah. like you gotta pick water and those rocks. Yeah, it's like a grow in the the uh, propagator and rock and water, but they're gonna attach in the root. They're gonna attach into the rocks, and this is really development, really good rock, really good roots. Any of you who are just listening to this episode right now, if you could see my face, I I. I, I I'm just, I don't even understand what he's saying. It doesn't make any sense to me. I believe Edgar's lying, but okay. I'll, uh, <laughs> I trust you. I, I I fully trust you here. Um, I can't wait to see this process. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I can't guarantee you the works yet, guys, but I will, t- I will check back in with you and let you know, because this is blowing my mind. You're just telling me that you're going to take a cutting and place it in a rock medium um, and you're going to you're going to keep it wet. wet. You're going to keep it wet. But that's due to humidity, not yeah. sitting in water. No sitting in the water. The, the way they do it is they uh, put a two cups. Okay. So so there's a, it's a two cup system. Yeah. There's a cup, let's say a smaller cup, yeah. maybe it has rocks in the cutting inside of it. Yeah. And then that cup goes inside of another cup mm-hmm. that has water. Yeah. Does that first cup with the rocks have holes in it? Yeah, they have holes. Yeah, it has holes, so drainage holes. So the roots are sniffing out this moisture, mm-hmm. and they're trying to find their way to it. Yeah, and that's how they grow. Yeah. And this is a perfect. They keep their really good variegation. Yeah, mm. and that that's for allocation. Okay. Prefer oh, allocation. perfect for allocation. Allocations, yes, and and a really a high variegation plant. And the great thing is that you can propagate right away. Mm. You know, you can play. You-, <laughs> you can you can propagate those uh, those plants right right away. I agree. Because in that in that in that type of media. Yeah. I don't I don't know the, the I remember I don't remember the actual name of the. But we're talking about the small plants. Of but, course. Well, yeah. Not the big yeah, plants. When they mature, you gotta put it in in my in the other soil, which is gonna be a cocoa. Yeah. Chunk, cocoa chunk. Or Coco uh, Aroy for the other. But I mixes. think that's important. I think the idea mm-hmm. in, in for our listeners and, and viewers, I think it is important to uh, clarify that you're saying that there are going to be better methods of uh, or different variations of methods when it comes to propagating different plants. Yeah. This particular one that you're talking about now is probably best for anthuriums. Oh no, alocasias. Uh, but there are different sort of other methods, like I was ta- like I, I speak on in my new book, um, whether it's uh, water, whether it's going in moss or cocoa, like you were saying before. And, and the point is that the, the, the root doesn't get rot. The, we That's don't want point. roots getting yeah. rotted at all. Yeah. That's the and whole those point. type of uh, media that I have, mm-hmm. you know, and anyone, they, they, they turn. I love it. Oh, well, here's the thing. I'm, and, and it's... And I'm being as honest as I possibly can be because that's just what, what I'm doing here. I just think the fact that your results in the, in the plants that you're selling, when you're showing them, when you walk into your shop, it says it right there. Yeah. That what is in the soil medium is what you're seeing in the exactly. foliage. Exactly, yeah. That's yeah. that's the guarantee. Yeah. I'm showing you right now that what we're doing here is working based on what I'm putting in the yeah. soil and feeding these plants is yeah. right there in the foliage, and and that is the like these like, plants already have been here two months. He's he's uh, if you and can't I, see this, he's actually looking back at one of his Thai constellations. Yeah, these plants are already two months here, and they look happy. Look at the new leaves. It's beautiful. And everything. It I is a beautiful Thai. The, the leaves are probably yeah. about thirty six inches. Uh, in diameter, there's probably about eight the or ten ZZ, of them. Probably they lose like a three or four leaves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's I got mean, a variegated ZZ. What is the name of the variegated ZZ? What do you call it? <laughs> you don't have a name for it yet? Uh, oh, the name? Um, no, I don't have no name. You don't have a name for it yet. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. All right, well, let's, you know what? I got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this. Um, I'm going to say right here. <laughs> I'm going to end this episode with one last question. Mm-hmm. Um so that our listeners and viewers can uh, be prepared, get excited. Mm -hmm. You know the future of the variegated rare plant space. You know what's coming down the road. What is, uh, name me three plants that many of us in the plant space who love plants, who are excited to add more to our collection, what are three plants that you have seen that you know are going to start trickling into plant shops or online um, in the next year? 
the synapses. The synapses, okay. The synapses, uh, high variegation. We're going to have many, many allocations, uh, variegated, mm-hmm. uh, beautiful size like this with a beautiful variegation. Size wise, he was. And um, affordable prices. Gesturing that they were yeah. what, two, f- two feet tall? No, or it's a four inches pot. Four inch pot, copy. You know, the, that, the, 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 the fact is that the, the variegation, uh, I mean, the plant, everyone wants a baby. No one wants big plants. What's why? It's, uh, probably 70% of people like plants. Smaller plants. And, and especially with their Because 70% plants. of the people who are bringing plants into their yeah. spaces are living in small and, and apartments. Actually, they buy the nut. They buy the yeah, they kerns. Buy they yeah, buy yeah. the kerns. They buy the little tongue. They want to see how did they grow. They want to experiment yeah. themselves. They can grow a plant like that. So they, they do it a very good challenge. Uh, and then the other 30%, they like big plants like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Like you, you like. Big I like big plants, yeah. of course. I'm a more salesperson than I'm grower, than I am a, than a grower. Of course, you've been saying but that. But uh, at the same time, I spend a lot of time in my in my greenhouse that I learn mm-hmm. by experiment every single plant. I go every single spot where I have my plants, and I and I ask him, "How are you doing, guys? Are you okay?" <laughs> When it's something wrong, I <laughs> I call my 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 hand right size hand right size and I say, hey, girl, there's help me up right here. Let's do something. You were saying he calls his right hand man. Yeah, right hand man. He say, yeah. hell there, please let's do something immediately. <laughs> and he's go over there and boom, 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 boom. Of course. Catch. Who's your right hand man when it comes to the plants? Uh girl there. Ah. And my daughters, my daughters. Your daughters, of course. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, my, as, but Melody is incredible. It's incredible. incredible Melody is your growers. older daughter? Yeah. She's really organized. Her. She cares about me. I've heard she, through the... Uh, yeah, she had the other Hoyas, but she care about everything things to run Every, well. You know what I mean? When for they sure. Say, when there's something wrong, they say, Papi, I look this not turn well. <laughs> Papi, so careful with it. She told me anything, you know yeah. what I mean? I said, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, thank I've heard so through much. the grapevine, or should we say Hoya vine, that uh, Melody is the Hoya queen. I think she is because, because she has so much effort and the Hoyas, and then she do the own cuttings. She mm-hmm. counting the cuttings. She organized the, every single pot. When she sells her Hoyas, they have in the bags. They have us protecting by something happening in the, in the way when the destiny. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more than, it's more than service. It's know? wonderful. It's wonderful to see that you have, yeah, it's, uh, it's not, it's not about money. Yeah. It's about sharing the, the beautiful plants. And uh, and uh, Melody's Hoyas is famous, and the gardens. Hey, when they say hey, everybody want a mo- Melody's Hoyas. I love that. In Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and uh, Tennessee. You I know what it. I mean? Yeah. This is this is incredible. Whose Hoyas is like these? Are like, those, uh, those are Hilton's Hoyas? Nah, I want Melody's Hoyas. Yeah, and and she is like really, really. Oh, you yeah. know what? Not actually. I, I I didn't think about this, but when I just said Hilton's Hoyas. I don't want to compete with Melody, but that might be a nice book for myself. Hilton's Hoyas. Uh, Mel- oh. Actually, maybe Melody and I can come together and we'll start, we'll start our own Hoya business. But I love, what I actually absolutely love is that um, this whole thing, this business was started by the fact that you wanted to make your wife happy. In turn, it created a business for your family that makes not only your wife happy, but makes you and your entire family, your children happy. You've created a family business. Your daughter, Melody, is creating her own line of Hoyas that people are excited about. You just said, so famous for. Your daughter, Paula, is, well, main, from what I can tell, is the brains behind the marketing, the branding of the actual business itself. She's really putting it out there. Where do you see the business? Five to ten years from now, I see that anybody can afford it to a beautiful plant. I think this plant they 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 become popular in the in in, the, in about four years ago, um, and 
nobody knows anything about this plant before. No. So, so I practically these brand new plants. Um, they they trends from the millennials. People, the millennials mm -hmm. brought it in. They mm -hmm. investigated every single uh, plant, and they love it and post it on Instagram. And they say, "Look, this is so beautiful," and 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 I want it. You know, uh, it was a very very limited quantities of these plants, so that make it really expensive mm -hmm. back then. But now, uh, probably the, the price is going to be a, a, a very affordable. And every single nursery in U.S., they can have it, you know. Uh, so what does that do to your oh, business? That, mean, that, that means every single nurseries, uh, growers or wholesalers around here in South Florida or everywhere, they can sell it to their retailers also. Got it. So, so practically, they will be uh, very popular still. Um, I think... This is something will be discovery, and we're gonna stay with this plant. We're not gonna change it. I think with people really plant, really plant lovers, they wanna keep have the plant inside the house, and they know how to keep it alive. So you don't see this. Um, this is a question that I'm throwing at you that I've only I've had thrown at me. Uh, I know my answer to it, but do you see this as a fad? No. At all, I think they continue doing it because uh, we need we needed this plant, and we find out the plant is good for us. They really make us happy. So, so, so it's not only you; it's not happening yeah. to you. We yeah. say, we speak the same language for sure. We feel the same exactly the same uh, together. So, this, I don't see no change in this. No change. No, no. I love it. Yeah, agreed. But but uh, uh, the the I have to I I try, um, um, well I try to be affordable. Yeah, and this is the point. I gotta propagate in so much and I try to be affordable. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Edgar. I uh, appreciate you spending the time with us um, and sharing about your journey. Uh, sharing about why it's so important to you. Hearing this um, not only inspires me, I hope it inspires our listeners, our viewers, but um, everyone, Edgar Amasquita, the Aeroid King, the yeah. owner of uh, Perfect Choice Nurseries and uh, the Aeroid Greenhouses. So um, I really think if you're not, a, if you're not familiar already, you have to come down to um, Southwest Ranches here in Florida, go check out the nursery. And if you're lucky enough, you might get a peek into the greenhouses as well. Edgar, before we go, where can people find you on social? Okay. What's uh, your Instagram handle? My Instagram is Aeroidat. All right. Aeroidat. Aeroidat and Perfect Choice. Uh, Aeroidat and Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Perfect yes, choice. I, I, I wrote that because I had my two daughters. Uh huh. And uh, and I work. I in the beginning it was weird. I wrote that. I wrote that. But right now, uh, the both are them and and the heroes. Yeah. So, so it is. I really deserve it to be Aeroid Dad. I love it. I love <laughs> it. So at Aeroid Dad on Instagram and Facebook, and then at Perfect Choice Nurseries. And Perfect Choice Nurseries, Aeroid Greenhouses. And at Aeroid Greenhouses. We had three, we had three uh, different... Three uh, handles. Yeah. I love that. Um, and then the, uh, the site is perfectchoicenurseries.com. Perfect Choice Nurseries. Perfect Choice Nurseries. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My purpose of all this conversation is to share in the greatest things about the plant. And this is this is all about. We could, I, I felt it. I hope our viewers and listeners felt it as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Balancing work and life can be really stressful. And finding ways to work through the stress is always a goal of mine. Of course, the process of nurturing plants helps me to slow down, take a breath and bring in joy. But unfortunately, my plants aren't licensed therapists with expert advice. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, 
or you're just a human who lives in this world who is going through a hard time. Therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding the therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with the therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com forward slash Hilton. Clicking this link helps to support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Starting this podcast was supposed to be a little extra therapy for me, getting the ideas in my head out. Good to know I can always use better help just in case Molly can't help me. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with better help. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Hilton. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel.